Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rigging to the Com video, we're going to be tackling three pieces of news which have popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things off with AMD and a microcode update, which is going to improve memory compatibility across the board, especially for faster DIMMs, as well as possibly some improvements in performance. We'll go into that in a moment. Also, Intel and the first i7-8650 benchmarks have popped out, so that gives us an insight into the 8th generation of processors, though it is, however, a mobile orientated CPU. And then we're going to discuss CPU Z 1.79, which features a totally different benchmark, and that's very important, because this benchmark radically changes how you judge performance across AMD and Intel CPUs, but we'll go into that in a moment. Let's first things first discuss the microcode update for Ryzen. So there has already been one microcode update, of course, since Ryzen has been released, and that took it to 1.0.0.4, but the same thing, but 0.6 is going to improve memory and also going to enable 20 memory register. Now, the idea behind this is quite simple. Uh, AMD are being very aggressive to improve the memory performance on Ryzen, and with the addition of these 20 memory registers, we should see much better plug-and-play compatibility with existing compatible Intel DDR4 memory modules. Your luck so far really does depend upon who has made the memory in question. A lot of Samsung b die memory chips seem to work pretty well. That's according to Robert Halleck himself, who is, of course, AMD's technical marketing lead. And generally speaking, you can get faster clock speeds out of those. Uh, just as a small, you know, what personally we've found, we've noticed that MSI boards are pretty damn good with a couple of memory modules we've got, including a Crucial Ballistics 3000 megahertz. We've got it running at 2666 on, um, sorry, 2667 on a B350 Tomahawk that I'm currently in the middle of reviewing, as well as uh, MSI's kind of, um, I guess, well, flagship, and that is the Titanium. On the other hand, one of the Asus boards that we have, which is the Asus uh, Prime Pro, we can't get it running above 2400 megahertz, despite the memory, um, I'm sorry, despite the BIOS update. But I'm sure this will become more uniform as the manufacturers work on BIOSes, and it's just you know, just kind of what you expect. There are a lot of uh, memory compatibility guides out there. If you are unsure, what I'd suggest you do is Google um, Reddit Wide Desire, and that is W I I D Desire, and then that will pop up with a Reddit post which has a lot of different memory compatibility uh, information, especially if you are just about to buy a Ryzen system. And there are a lot of other guides on the internet as well. So if you are unsure, do do some Googling first, just so that you can just kind of hit the ground running. Speaking of hitting the ground running, I feel discussing CPU Z is one of the more curious things that have popped up. And I'll let you make your own judgments on this one, because quite frankly, it's a bit weird. Okay, so. 1.78 came and, well, went, and there was, you know, not much of a fanfare in terms of we all kind of knew that it was a small incremental upgrade, blah, blah, blah. It obviously added rising compatibility um, and other bits and pieces as, you know, CPU-C version incremented. And, of course, reviewers as well as regular users were occasionally using the CPU-Z's built-in benchmark as a kind of point of comparison just to see, just to see how the CPU performed. No harm, no foul. So I did do a couple of different tests with the CPU-Z on a Ryzen system, and obviously performance scores have changed quite considerably. Now, the reason the benchmark has changed and the scores have been lowered across the board, including Intel, is because back in the day, there were only a few parts which included eight cores, like, for example, the 5960X, is according to uh, CPU ID themselves. And obviously now Ryzen is introduced, as well as other uh, higher core models, of, in, including Intel. They're going to be releasing a lot of their uh, higher performance processors over the next you know couple of years. It won't be long before 16 cores or 16 threads or 32 threads becomes pretty normal, really. But 
what they decided to do is make a lower scale. So that makes comparisons easier, according to them. <clears throat> and so the new benchmark uses an entirely different algorithm. However, while that's not exactly anything interesting in itself, because, you know, benchmark applications change all the time, a number of users have been complaining because Ryzen performance seems to decrease higher, or rather more, than an Intel processor. And the reason behind this is because the original benchmark, I'll leave it to you with how much you want to believe this or what, how you want to interpret this, the original benchmark was released in 2015. And it was tested with all of the relevant architectures that were available at that point. So it's about two years later now, and Ryzen was introduced. And according to them, I'll read this bit verbatim, clock for core for core and clock for clock almost 30% higher than Intel Skylake. After a deep investigation, we found that the code of the benchmark felt into a sp felt, I'm assuming they may have fell, but whatever, into a special case on Ryzen microarchitecture because of unexpected sequence of integer instructions. These operations added a noticeable, but similar delay to all existing microarchitectures at the time that the previous benchmark was developed. When Ryzen was released, we found out that ALUs executed this unexpected sequence in a much more efficient way, leading to the results of that mismatch the average performance of the new architecture. We reviewed many software and synthetic benchmarks without being able to find a single case where the performance boost occurs. We're now convinced that this is a special case is very unlikely to happen in real world behavior, uh, so real world applications, and now a new algorithm described below does not exhibit this behavior. So in other words, if you want to cut through the technical mumbo jumbo, Ryzen CPUs just so happened to be really good at running this particular benchmark, but uh, the folks who create the application said, well, it's not very likely in a real-world scenario, so what we're going to do is basically rewrite our entire application. Uh, so what algorithm does the benchmark use and what instruction set is used? The new benchmark computes two-dimensional noise function that would could typically be used in a game to generate a procedural map. The code is written in C++ and compiled with Visual C++ uh, Visual C++ 2008. No special instruction set is used, but the x86 version does use Scalar SSE slash SSE2 instructions to achieve floating point operations, whereas the 32-bit version keeps the legacy x87 instructions, resulting in almost half of the x64 performance, end quote. Well, gee whiz and golly, that is quite a quite a thing. Um, I'm really not quite sure how to take that, to be honest. I don't particularly think that there's anything amiss, because obviously on the internet people are already taking this as... Um, they've been taking bribes or whatever, you know, to improve the performance on Intel relative to AMD. Or, but I don't necessarily agree that that's the case. But I do feel that they've handled this whole thing kind of badly. And once again, I feel that what they should have done is possibly piled in both benchmarks into the same application and just basically called it a slightly different benchmark because let's say, face it, CPU-Z is not exactly a large application to begin with and simply had a couple of different benchmarks and then gradually over a couple of months, sorry, over maybe a year, two years, slowly phase out the other one as a legacy benchmark. So let's say for the next year, they have both benchmarks on there and then perhaps another Six months later, they say that, hey, this is going to become legacy. They're warning people it's going to become legacy. And obviously that way it becomes a lot smoother and it's not quite the surprise for everyone. And it doesn't feel like, you know, you're giving one manufacturer preferential treatment, which I don't necessarily imply they are. In fact, I'm not implying they are. But I just feel that it would have been better if they had both benchmarks in there and once again had that smooth transition. It also makes things a bit tricky when you're talking about bloody benchmarks now because it's like which version of CPU-Z are you using? You're now going to have to specify the version number, whereas, you know, Cinebench... One thing I did like about Cinebench is they had a clear delimination. The benchmark is entirely different as well as its visual. And, of course, you've got version 11. Point five you've got 15 point whatever and it's clear that the benchmark is going to be bloody different like if you have 3d mark 2000 and blah like 2001 and then you compare that to 2003 you know, obviously going back a bit here there's no way in hell that mentally you're going to think to yourself that those are the same benchmark you know it's going to be the same performance it's going to be the same 
uh, runs that are going to be taking place, you're obviously going to see something entirely different. So what I feel they should have done is, especially because this is a very small increment of a number, what they should have done is just have both benchmarks in there, and I think that would have been the better way to go. But obviously, I'm not the one programming the application, and, well, it's not really my decision. Let me know what you think in, of course, the comments below. Finally, The Rock has come... No, not really. Um... I want to discuss one very small piece of news, and that is the first i7-8650U processor has popped up in GFX Bench. Now, this is obviously a benchmark for those who didn't know, but I think most of you did. The 8650 is not based upon Canon Link. I just want to repeat that one more time. It is not based upon the new architecture. Instead, it is based upon Kaby Lake. Which is another reason I really don't like Intel's naming schemes. I think they're rather confusing to customers at, at best. Because if you have an 8 at the end, most people are going to say, Okay, well that's the new architecture, right? No, it's not. And it's also more confusing when you consider that Cable Lake is a 7, but Sky Lake is a 6. And it, it, it just gets kind of messy. But... I guess you can't really bitch when AMD are doing it for, let's say, the 480 to the 580, and then you've got NVIDIA have done it in the past with a plethora of different things. It, it just is what it is. But I don't like how you've got these concurrent uh, architectures running. Uh, but anyway, is what it is. The, 86, the 8650U is going to be created at 14nm, and we have a couple of benchmarks. It seems to be running at 1.9 gigahertz, and apparently... Um, it, in theory, should be clocked higher because Intel have indicated that certain models will be over. Sorry, will clock up to four gigahertz. The integrated graphics is not exactly a surprise to anyone. It's HD graphics 620, and it supposedly is going to hit the market in 2017. Not exactly super interesting for many of you, but hey, it tells us at least that the CPUs are slowly being worked on. Anyway. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.